Oops. <laughs> yes, that is a beautiful, wild, eastern turkey fan. Isn't that spectacular? Welcome. Welcome to Surefire Wednesdays with the Outdoor Chef. Uh, the Outdoor Chef is a group of chefs. This is my youngest son, Bailey, my oldest son, Dakota. Good evening. And we are a family of chefs who are really passionate about the outdoors. Now, you can see in front of me, I've got this incredible bird. This yep. bird was running around southwestern Ontario about a week ago. Yep, just a couple of days ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that we know that you face, some, one of the challenges you face, is what to do with this wild game and fish once you get it home, uh, even maybe if your freezer's full. Now, this bird came out of the freezer. And one of the things that we want to start by telling you is every single detail. So when we thaw this bird, you want to make sure to thaw it in cold running water or in the refrigerator a couple days in advance. Yeah. So one of the things about Surefire Recipes is we're going to take the time. This is not going to be that hurry up and wait thing you're used to on TV. This is interactive. So this is your opportunity to ask us anything, anything you want to want ask us. We've got a bunch of people monitoring all of our channels and we want to hear from you. We're most interested in teaching you how to cook. Yeah. Make sure to ask any questions you can because uh, my dad has been a chef for almost, what, 10 years? At least. Yep, at least 10 years. <laughs> Code's been working bes beside him for almost just as long, but yep. I almost got into cooking maybe about a year or two ago, so I don't know as much as these guys. <clears throat> so I'll be learning almost along with you. There'll be times where these guys use fancy words like mirepoix and brunoise and stuff <laughs> like that, and you won't even have an idea of what that is. So make sure to tell us in those comments so that as we teach you the techniques, you know what we're talking about, not just nodding yeah. your head along. So today's recipe? We're going to be doing cast iron wild turkey cottage pie. And maybe you're like, what is that? It's a lot like a shepherd's pie. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by teaching you how to saute your vegetables. And we're going to grind and pull all the dark meat off of this bird. And then we're going to grind it. So one of the things that is so important to using wild game after you've worked so hard to get it. So let's talk a little bit about our hunt. Yeah. So this bird came to us the fourth day in. Yeah. And this is Dakota's very first bird. Very first bird. It was four days in. We spent four days in the blind. We had the most torrential downpour I think we've ever sat in. And we froze our butts off. But on the fourth morning, we went. We set up a blind on a new spot where we had saw quite a few turkeys coming out. And it was probably about 15 minutes after shooting time began, two, two gobblers walked out. They started beating the heck out of our Jake decoy. And we said, you ready? Yep. <laughs> and we, I drew, bam, took that shot at 18 yards and he dropped right there. It was over with. The thing that's so amazing is you're sitting there and it's like, it seems like you wait for an eternity. Yep. And if you've hunted for turkey, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then there's that moment yep. and you know, it's you hear it, <laughs> they get in that zone and you know, they're coming, yep. you know, they're coming. I was watching one of Steve Ronella's uh, pieces yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like, there's that one moment and everybody says the same thing and he's right. They're coming. coming and you can feel them coming and your heart starts to race. Yep. And you know, for me, that's the one part. And that's, that's where that passion is growing for us. So we're new hunters, just so you know. Yep. So we've only just been introduced to the entire hunting world. So we're very grateful to all of our partners, uh, to our sponsors, especially to our family, because they've been so patient <laughs> with us. And at times I think they just look yep. the other way, but we have such a strong passion for food, but now that's being measured with our passion for the outdoors. Yeah. And the reason it's important is that as a chef, I felt a bit hypocritical, always teaching people how to cook. Yeah. I've been on uh, television for about 10 years, and so I'm always teaching people how to cook, but the one thing I've never done, I never harvested an animal. I've never killed, for example, a turkey, plucked it, gutted it, and then taken it like this in front of you to see what can be done with it. We want to use the whole bird. Yeah, and that, that in itself is a completely different game. We got this bird, and just taking the feathers off alone, you oh, right. buy a turkey from the store, it looks exactly like this. You've never seen something like when you finally get a bird like this and you start taking it apart feather by feather, and then you get inside and you see the beauty of what's not only on the outside, but on the inside of this animal. It's something you only really can see up close and personal to finally grasp what it is. 
So one of the things we're going to do, uh, you'll see, now I've worked so hard, I, would, I wish it was only Thanksgiving, because <laughs> at Thanksgiving I would never be pulling this apart. Now we're guaranteed to get, I hope, a few more birds next week, but I would leave this hole and roast it, take advantage of all the bones. But what I want to do is I want to teach you a couple recipes. Like we mentioned, we're doing a cottage pie, which is just essentially a shepherd's pie. Yep. Easy preparation, and actually, you know what, Dakota, we need those organ meats out of the fridge. Okay. But we want to use the organ meats and we want to use the breast. But what we're going to do for next week's Surefire, we're going to smoke these legs. The legs we're going to pull off and we're going to smoke. And we're going to do a smoked turkey leg with dumplings. So it's going to be basically one bird, but two dishes. And I believe the dishes, each one, will feed at least eight people. Let's have a look at those lungs. So we've got the lungs. And we've got the heart in there. We've got some livers in there. And I'll tell you, you know, we had the gizzard set aside. We weren't going to give up the gizzard. <laughs> We're cleaning this this old boy outside. And you know, we turned around. And, I, and I'm pretty sure one of the dogs the dog, got the yeah, gizzard. Two dogs running so, around. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do <laughs> gizzard next week, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by beginning to break the bird down. And what you want to do is, first of all, to take the breast off, you want to run a good sharp knife right along the, the uh, breastbone. And I'm going to take that skin off. The skin would imagine how fabulous the skin would be if it was uh, if I could roast it with the skin oh, on. Oh. But I'm going to grind this up, and of course we're not going to use the uh, the skin for grinding. So I just pull that back. Look at that incredible, beautiful flesh. Was, it's just spectacular. Our experience so far, like like we said, we've only taken and harvested a couple animals, but our experience so far. We've only cooked farm man, farmed animals our entire lives. But wild game has just amazed us. Every single thing that we've cooked so far, it, it's been better, wouldn't you, wouldn't you it, say? Well, it's better. Like, for example, I took my first white tail back in uh, December. And I'm telling you the quality. I've had the very best. I'm talking the best food in the world. And I, that is without a doubt the best. It, it compares to the best dry age. Longhorn, Wagyu, you name it, it's the it's the best. There's nothing quite like it. Something as simple as this, the thing that really amazed me, especially when, as he said, when we got his deer in December, the, the, I don't know if it's connective tissue or what it is between the skin and every single mm -hmm. animal. As you pull it off, you have what looks like a spider web almost. Yeah. And it's just like this weird kind of textured tissue that holds the skin to the animal. And it is the coolest thing you've ever seen in your entire life. So what we're gonna, one thing that we're gonna do, and you'll see the camera shake just a little bit, we want you to not miss any part of this. So what we're gonna do, you'll see us go off the uh, tripod. It allows us to really get, get you up into the action. Because the most important thing for us here is not to do a TV show or not to do a production. The most important thing for us is for you to see how to do this. Now you see, I'm just running my knife. I'm literally using the knife to press it off the bone. And as I run it down, you'll see it separates quite easily. One of the things, yeah, just hold that uh, leg up there. You can see it. it literally just presses off. So this would be like the tenderloin. So I'm going to pull that out. And what we have to do is literally, I'm going to put, hand these off to Bailey. Because what Bailey's going to do is start to cut them into little chunks and get them ready for the, uh, for the grinder. Remember, at home... If you have any questions, this is the time to ask it. If you've even, and you know what? I'll even put it down. If you've been doing this for your entire life and you have a better way of doing any of the things we're doing, I accept that challenge too. I want to hear from you. I want to know how to do this because we want to be the best wild game cooks that, uh, you know, in the industry. I can't believe even this, uh, this meat here. Like, I've seen a bunch of turkeys, Thanksgiving, everything from the stores, but even if you look at the meat, the way it's connected in between, like, just look at this. I don't know if you can see that, but it is the coolest thing I think I've ever seen, just the way that these animals are put together. The other thing that we're doing with this first uh, Surefire video is we really want to hear from you. We want to know what it is that you want to see cooked. We want to know uh, what you feel is missing from any cooking shows so that uh, we can best tailor for you. Now let's have it, since Code's got that off, look at that beautiful, beautiful breast. You can see that lovely texture and the size of it. One thing you'll notice for sure is this is smaller, isn't it? So you know, notice the difference. Uh, the commercially produced turkeys, you can see that that breast is at least half the size. So that's the difference between free range and, uh, and organic. 
organic wild turkey. This is the breast? That's, there, there's two parts. So that's the, what you just cut up there, that's the tenderloin. So you know, you see it on chicken, that little strip on the back, mm -hmm. same thing. So this whole thing is one breast? Yep. Another about, breast coming. I don't know about small. <laughs> well, <laughs> compared, compared to a commercial turkey, it's a little bit smaller. I guess that's why you're not like a butterball. Not like a butterball. <laughs> so again, I'm pulling off all of this skin. Now, while I continue to do this, I want to get Dakota started yep. on a little bit of preparation. So you'll notice in front of us we've got leek, and I'll get Dakota to grab that. Uh, so I want to teach you about a flavor base. Uh, the French call it mirepoix. Now, mirepoix is very simply carrot, celery, and onion. And the reason those three things come together so perfectly is it's a perfect balance of sweetness with a per perfect balance of savory. And when added to any dish, so you, you've seen it, you know your mom, your, your, uh, your aunt, your grandmother, your nana, they have always used these ingredients, but now I'm gonna tell you why. Yep. So as you begin to cook them down, they get, it gets rid of the moisture. And what happens is their natural flavors, they get intensified. Yep. They get caramelized, it, pr it improves flavor. And what we wanna do with the wild turkey is we wanna accentuate the natural, beautiful flavors that are going on in there. Yep. So you'll notice leek. I'm gonna come up and show you this here. If you've never seen a leek before, you can see it there. And what we're gonna do is you'll notice that part here it goes to a dark green, light green, and then you have this white part. What you wanna do is trim it right before it goes to that dark green. I'll show you why. This is the you'll see green. there you're still into really good okay, stuff there. Like yeah, the little part. We're gonna peel the outer layer. Now, leek are grown primarily in sand. So one of the things you always want to do with leek is you have to rinse them. That's a big thing with leek. Uh, you know, soil is one thing you can get away with. A little bit of soil in your food, never hurt anybody. Yeah. But sand, it'll feel like you're chewing on a, a sandpaper. So you can see here, there's some sand on that outer layer. And we're just going to wash that up so it all comes off. Still working away on this breast. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know about small. This thing looks like a lot of meat. I can see why you said like eight people or so. Oh, at least eight people. And we got a big family. I mean, I'm one of five kids. You have my two little sisters, Blake, who's five, six. Now you're six. doing it. I don't know. Six? There she's right there. Blake is six. Grace is ten. And then I have an older sister, Blair, who is 21. <laughs> 21. And then my older brother, Dakota, who's 25. Yep. Yep. And he himself, he's got a wife and two kids. So I got two nieces. And my Nana and Papa are sitting back there. And, every, like, when we try to feed everybody at our table, we basically have to go out and spend, like, $200 at the grocery store for one meal. Because between sides, plus the meat, plus yep. our dessert, and, like, it's a lot of food just to feed one family. So you'll notice you're left with this part at the end. This part just goes in the trash. It's not used for absolutely anything. The only thing you can use that for, really, is for stocks. Yep. It's really powerfully flavored, so it's not really good for anything else. And you'll notice this carrot. These carrots are new carrots. I can see that the outside of this carrot is not tough. That skin is not going to be tough at all. So we're actually just going to leave that skin right on. We yeah, give it a little bit out. of a scrub so there's no dirt on it, but there's no reason to peel that carrot. Lots of flavor in the skin. You'll notice for the cottage pie, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to do a, a typical potato topping, but we're going to add uh, parsnips in it as well. So you want to add flavors that complement, but don't overpower. You'll notice I'm cutting all of these vegetables to the same size. The reason for that is so that they cook evenly. Yeah. i got to tell you, it's breaking my heart pulling the skin off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just perfectly. You know, one of the things, so this is actually, I'm doing this live. This is one of the, the first times I've actually taken apart a, a uh, wild turkey. And structurally, this is completely different yeah. than a commercial turkey. Absolutely completely different. I never expected the leanness in the neck and the amount of, uh, the amount of, Obviously, these birds work a lot harder out there, so what you're left with is a little bit less muscle in some areas and a lot more muscle in other areas. Even when they, uh, when they gobble, I remember the, we, I saw it the first time day one on our turkey yeah, hunt in yeah. person about 65 yards away. He almost got done early. When, when, <laughs> when he walked out and he did that thing, it's like he, they throw their whole body into that when they stick their head forward and go, Boo! It, 
like, I don't know, it's probably for you, uh, it's wild. hunted turkey for many years, it's like, oh, they're gobbling, but like, I don't know if you can remember back to when you saw that for the first time. I think we actually released a video on Instagram where the first time I heard it, I gave Dad a big thumbs up. One, because I thought he was coming in, and two, because I thought it was so cool to hear it in person. So, not to be, uh, I'll do it, I won't do a close-up of this, but what I have here is I have some really unique, uh, this is actually coming from down from the neck. I have this very, it's almost like a gelatinous material. Yep. Now, this would be, this is definitely something that you want to remove. The one thing when you're separating something, uh, by uh, virtue of creation, uh, animals, they have these little pathways in between the muscles. And it's that little bit of membrane, that little bit of connective tissue that helps you follow the muscles and the bones so you can get it good and cleaned off. Now, here's the other uh, breast for Bay. He's still working on uh, the first one. Yeah, the first one. <laughs> but what I'm going to do with this, you can see there's just a little bit of meat left on that. I'm going to take and set this aside. But we're going to take the legs off and we'll smoke the legs. And then instead of throwing this carcass out, what I'm going to do, and I want you to get your uh, pen and paper out here for a second. This is really important. I want to take. I want you to take this in a big stock pot. The first thing I want you to do is run some cold water. Just basically cleaning it out a little bit before you start to cook it. Then drain that water off and top it back up with cold water. One of the most important things when you're using poultry and frankly any protein is to watch the danger zones. So if anything above four degrees, you're gonna get into an area where potentially someone could get sick eating it. That's why sometimes people at Thanksgiving especially they haven't fully thawed a turkey. Yeah. What happens is there's still a little bit of the core that's frozen. And as it heats up, it's in that danger zone between about 4 degrees and 75 degrees where it's actually dangerous for more than an hour. So in this case, what I want to do, now back to making a stock. Great big old stock pot, and I want you to put carrot, celery. You don't even have to peel them. Carrot, celery, onion, and leek. Throw in a, uh, about five cloves, about a half dozen uh, black peppers, and some bay leaves. And just cook it. Just cook it on a real low, not a rolling boil, but about a medium, about medium heat. And what you're going to get on the top is a little bit of what we call, like it's just ba basically some junk. Oh, yeah. You know, and what's happening is any of the impurities, they're literally coming to the top of that stock Boiling pot. off. Don't stir that back in. That has to be skimmed off. You want a really nice crystal clear stock. Now, we will be showing you how to do that in yeah. detail, but I just want to tell you about it in case you mix that. It gives you that. a real, if you leave it in there, it gives it a real bitter taste that's not very pleasant at all. And it's dirty. Yeah. So you can see, just looking at the anatomy of this bird, you can see the size of the legs. And I'm just going to take this and set, a, set it aside. Excuse me so you'll see, a on the celery, you've never heard of maybe not peeling celery. So celery, when you get a stalk and you have the outside pieces, those pieces are extremely stringy. If I was to, you know, it's extremely stringy. You wonder why you chew on celery and you get these stringy pieces that come out. That's why. If you peel that off, it's just going to be tender. So I'm literally leaving it on the stock. It's much harder if you break it off, then peel it. Leave it on here and just peel it directly off. How are we doing there, Bay? Uh, good. I'm about halfway done the second breast, and I, got, I don't know if you can see, but I, I have an entire oh, bowl man, that of, looks absolutely gorgeous. of turkey, and I'm about to, as soon as I'm done this breast, I'm going to pull this grinder up, and it's actually the first time I will have been using a grinder, so I'm kind of excited to see what it looks like coming out, as well as how it works getting the meat in. So one of the things, the reason you might ask, uh, well, why don't you just take those cubes and uh, use those, and you could in a cottage pie. A cottage pie is meant to be a very rustic dish. It's meant to be uh, simple, one pan if possible. But the reason that we're going to teach you to grind it today is because uh, in introducing new people, and that's what we're all about, is showing new people how to enjoy wild game. So it's definitely going to have a different flavor. The other thing is we want to be able to use these organ meats because there's a ton of flavor in it. So, when I grind it up and fold it all together, I'm going to get the benefit of the flavor, but what's going to happen to the texture? The texture is going to be uniform. There won't be anything unpleasant. So that first bite, that person you want to introduce you, you know, your wife, your, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your whoever it is that has always been, oh, wild turkey, no, I'll pass. This is the dish for them. Because what we're doing is we're balancing the flavor and balancing the texture. If you think about the way that you eat, it's first of all, what does it look like? 
Then when you put it to your mouth, what does it immediately taste like? And then as you begin to chew it and enjoy it, it's what is the texture? So this is what you have to be thinking about every time you get into the kitchen. Is this uh, technically so, silver skin? Perfect example. So let's yeah. do a quick close up. You can walk that right up. Yeah, walk it up there. Walk it up and have a look at it. So that, that what Bailey's showing you there, that is connective tissue, that's silver skin, and that will not break down, so we've got to cook that down. Megan, we have a question? We have a question. Um, okay. So it's from Dave. He's asking, are you, Hi, Dave. Going, are you going to brine those legs before you smoke them? Oh, great question. So uh, Dave's asking, are we going to brine the legs? And the answer is absolutely. So brining does a couple things. It's a simple mixture of water with some salt and some sugar. And there's a couple things that happen. Number one, the best thing about brining is it wicks away any blood away from the bone. If you ever had wings at home, or wings when you're at a restaurant, you take a bite of them and you look at them, and you're like, oh my God, that's horrible. Those, those have not been brined, okay? So brining, and this is going back to, I think, grade nine biology. Moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. We, gotta, we wanna wick away anything that's bad, and we wanna add just a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of that sweetness, but what happens is it just makes it perfect for smoking. It adds some moisture too. So. Uh, thank you, Dave. Keep the questions coming. Yep. Remember, this is your show. Surefire Wednesdays is all about you. We want to answer anything that you have. Especially, I have a question. Yeah. What is brining? I just explained it. Typ <laughs> typical teenager. <laughs> you focus on okay. this. What you can do is watch it live later, and then we, and then you can see us, uh, or you can see how what we describe. Okay. So how's our carrot, celery, onion? Done. Okay. Now, oh my God, you can tell he's been in a kitchen. Okay. So first of all, my oh, first. Clean here too. It's very clean, very organized. <laughs> I don't want to say anything about what's going on over here. But my first impression of this is. It smells yeah. amazing. So this is one of the things, when you're selecting fresh vegetables, you wanna make sure, you know, not always, it doesn't have to be the top shelf stuff. No. Keep in mind, as vegetables progress, for, for here we get all really nice, jazzy, beautiful looking <laughs> stuff. But, you know, don't hesitate to grab that stuff off the rack yeah. that's a little bit, that's gone a little south, because what's happening is it's already started to degrade. Flavors are already starting to develop. Just so, bring yeah, have a quick look at that. Color here. All uniform cut, but automatically, look at the color that that brings. It just is gorgeous before you even cook it. Uh, so the first thing, I just want to get a couple things rolling here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the topping for cottage pie. Yep. Once Bailey gets this done, I'm going to have him do a little bit of work for me. But the topping is basically a mashed potato. Yep. Now we're going to elevate that by using parsnips. Now parsnips are very strong flavored. If you were just to take a bite out of this, it'd just about knock you on your can. It's really intense. But when you blanch it a little bit, it gets rid of some of that to really strong flavor. And parsnips and potatoes, they love each other. This is love here, okay? Uh, so what we're gonna do first is I've got some heavy cream. So this is just whipping cream. If it's too rich for you uh, or you know too much fat, just replace it with milk. Replace it with water, there's gonna be a ton of flavor anyway. So I've got a half cup of cream and a half cup of milk. Code, can you put a couple tablespoons of butter in there? Yep. Oh, it's right there, I got it right there. I got this uh, really great uh, butter dish. I, I know some of you uh, will really appreciate this. Those of you who are a little old school, check out this butter dish. So if you go back a few years, you want to see how to keep butter in good condition. So the butter goes in there, and then you have a little bit of water in here, and it stores just perfectly. I love this. He you know, go ahead. He likes to have fancy kitchen things around, but uh, to be honest, butter doesn't really last long enough in this house. <laughs> Every time he makes eggs, he's a French chef, so the three secrets to French cuisine is butter, butter, and more butter. So a little bit of uh, seasoning, a little bit of salt and pepper. Now, this is what I'm going to rice the potatoes into. Yep. And it's a lot easier to use and work with the potatoes and the parsnips when the liquid is warm. Have you ever taken and put in cold milk into hot potatoes? It's, it just immediately starts what happens. What, potatoes are primarily yeah. starch. And what it does, it just locks up those starches yep. and it just gets real thick real quick. Then you have to reheat it on the oven. And what ends up, ends up happening, you probably end up burning your potatoes again. Yeah. So if you just heat everything up. Have a little bit of butter, a little yep. bit of milk, a little bit of uh, cream, seasoned, 
just warm. Don't want to heat it up to the point where it's reducing or boiling. How are we doing there, buddy? Uh, the last thing I want to do is show you guys the uh, turkey heart. So this is the, the size of the turkey heart. It fits just about in your palm. Yep. But what I really want to show you is I've split it in half to quarter it to be grinded. And look at inside. It's not many things in this world that you can say, hey, let's look inside a heart. It's quite cool that as you go through these experiences, to start to see these things and almost how they work. Okay, so we have a fantastic giveaway. Are you ready? So Vortex Optics, the best glass in the business, uh, which, you know, I can tell you right now, most of the turkeys we were glassing, they were, they were a little further. We needed binoculars. They were a little further than yeah. we'd like so, to say. So, you know, we're calling and we're calling and we're calling and we're calling. And so it's amazing, you know, the process of, uh, you know, let me give you a little piece of advice. If you're just starting to uh, hunt turkeys, um, go in and scout the location first. Yeah. Don't bring anything with you except uh, you could maybe bring a call and maybe bring, you want to unpack that one, yeah. Chad? Uh, a good pair of uh, binos. Have a good pair of binoculars. So what you want to do is get in there, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Just sit and be silent. Listen. And you'll hear it. It's like a symphony. The birds start coming. There'll be like robins and blackbirds and starlings. You have little things come along, and all of a sudden, it's turkey time. Yep. And when it's turkey time, yeah. Got a question? Lost it. Check the feed. If you can hear us, folks, we're trying to solve our uh, our technical difficulties. Never thought I'd be able to say that. <laughs> Sorry, we're having technical difficulties. Do you hear that? No. Ed said he sat on his binoculars this, mor this morning. And <laughs> That's awesome. Folks, if you're just staring at my blank face, I'm really sorry. So, uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, one of the things about this is, uh, if you don't know, this is our very first live stream. So we're working out any of the kinks. I don't know if we've just uh, overwhelmed the network with uh, activity or what's going on. Even now, I don't know if, are we on? Are we rolling, code? I'm just checking here. It's working. We're going back at it again. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we've got a fantastic giveaway to give to you. Uh, what I started to say is I was going to give you a little piece of advice when it came to hunting turkey, and that is to make sure to get in there and sit quietly. Talk, babe.
check this out. Okay, guys, sorry. If you can see me, I'm sorry. We're just checking our feed. Just hang tight with me. You're going to want to see this recipe come together. Just bear with me for just a second.